Welcome to Thriving Through Menopause, where we talk about this time of life, mind, body, and spirit. I'm your host, Clarissa Christensen. Each week, I'm joined by top professionals dropping their tips and advice. Remember, episodes drop every Tuesday. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss a beat. And if you like this podcast, please rate and review it. Thank you, because this helps others to find the show. You can check out our website, find out which episodes are coming up, and get the latest blog and advice by going to my website, thrivethroughmenopause.com, and get ready to thrive, not just survive, through perimenopause and beyond. Welcome to another episode of Thriving Through Menopause. I'm your host, Clarissa Christensen. And if you are a regular listener, welcome back. If you're new, I'm so glad that you're here. Today, we're going to talk about a somatic practice that I only just recently discovered, and that is called TRE, or better said, Trauma Release Exercise. And I was fascinated when today's guest connected with me and said, I've got something really different and I think it might be interesting for your listeners to hear about. So we're going to hear today from Sylvia Tillman. She is a TRE practitioner. Welcome to the show, Sylvia. Thank you so much, Clarissa. Thank you. Well, it's wonderful having you here. And for a start, I mean, tell us about how you came into TRE and became a practitioner in this Well, that's field. a long story, but I'll cut it short, Clarissa. It was about, well, 10, 12 years ago when um, I was asked to be a body for a woman who was practicing or she was training and she wanted to practice on bodies and wanted experience. And I'm like, yeah, I'm interested in all kinds of alternative modalities. I, I want to take part of it. So I did a session with her and all I remember was like, that was really really relaxing very unique and different and now I want and then I left it I didn't do anything with it and now I wonder did I not understand the concept or did I totally dismiss it because I was under the impression um, I've never experienced trauma Um, totally wrong of course but yeah so and then fast forward to 2020 really when the pandemic hit and I was in the fortunate position of being on furlough and um, I was reorganizing my career and looking more or less how can I help the world rather than going back to business and doing all these yeah wonderful trainings I was like what does the world really need and I also took part in quite a few um, trauma conferences and really learned what really trauma is and it doesn't have to be big t trauma it could be collective like a pandemic it could be just the day-to-day stresses and I I was really interested looked into it um, started training um, just for myself really in the beginning and was blown away wow (laughs) for my listeners who maybe I'm much less aware of what Mm -hmm. TRE is. Can we sort of briefly describe what it is, even though it's a practice having experiences, and Mm -hmm. we'll share a bit of that in a minute. Uh, It's it's something that's felt. But talk a little bit about how it was developed and and essentially the the essences Mm -hmm. of TRE. So TRE stands for, officially stands for Tension and Trauma Releasing Exercises. But I'm also very keen to say it doesn't have to be big T trauma. Yeah, it's not, it's, that's the niche it's coming from because David Berselli, who created the process, he worked an awful lot in war zones and he realized that when we are under stress, we are contracting our muscles and everybody does that. So he realized people from all over the world he was working with, they were all sitting in this this way to really protect, protect their inner organs, their face, and um, and many people, many children were shaking. And then later on, 
sorry, I'm, I should say we are talking about a situation. He was sitting in a, in a bomb shelter. And later on, he said to the, to the adults, I realized the children were shaking. Why were you not shaking and tremoring? And the adults said, oh, we want to, but we don't want to show vulnerability in front of our of our children and david berselli then looked into it and realized that it's our body's innate reaction to tremor when the body wants to get rid of stress but we've been totally socialized out of it because i mean in 21st in the 21st century what 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 does it does it suggest when somebody is standing in front of you tremoring they are weak they are vulnerable they are um, they are ill um, they don't have themselves yeah. under control and so on and so on so our brain says no 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 don't do that you you look ridiculous um, whereas our body would probably think well bodies don't think, but our bodies would probably feel, God, that is amazing. Let's get rid of the stress and then get on with life. Yeah. Wow. That's, that's such an interesting observation, isn't it? From David to see that and then to develop this practice. And it is what, what we would call a somatic practice. So that's one where we don't speak. Exactly. Exactly. Because generally I'd say, and I mean, I can yeah, just talk from my own experience, but when something wasn't working in my life, I wanted to talk things through. Um, I wanted to talk about it um, with friends or at some stages I went even to see a counselor and helped me to make sense of yeah, the world and the thoughts in my, in my, in my mind. Um, so much so that I, that I started a training in, in, in counseling. Um, but to be honest, it didn't work for me. And that's why I was saying when I started the training in TAE, it just blew my mind because it made so much more sense. We are holding the stress in the body. We are totally dismissing the body because yeah, we are so clever. It's all about the mind and what we are thinking and the intellect and everything. Um, but no, I mean, it's first of all, it's a unit, of course, we are one person in mind and body and the connection is important but we i feel we are putting too much emphasis on our mind on our cognitive abilities and totally dismiss the body and then go to the doctor and complain about psychosomatic pain which manifests in the body as a result of too much stress and tension in the body yeah Yes, and and I think we know that we sometimes can't find the words. And then, you know, having worked with therapists, there's a little bit of leading the person to to talk about things. And it can feel very difficult to talk, and especially if you've experienced extreme stress, burnout, maybe a traumatic event, big or little t. We don't always find it easy to talk about that, least of all with someone we don't know, however good they are. And you're right, the body does hold it. I think there's a famous book, isn't it, called absolutely. The Body Holds the Score? Yeah, absolutely. Brilliant yeah. book, in case somebody hasn't discovered yeah. that. It's very true. And it's very true because, you know, I've watched and worked with pain patients mm-hmm. myself and they are under a lot of stress and they hold, like you said, they hold the tension Um in their bodies and of course that makes your pain worse it can make things like your menopause symptoms worse if you're tightening and hardening to that experience then you'll feel it even more and and i suppose that's where things like somatic practices of which tre is one of them is such a great way forward yeah clarissa i realized you you were asking about the somatic part of of tre um and that's And yeah, just to describe it a little bit, um, first of all, we do six warm up exercises. We are a little bit similar to yoga exercises. It's just to fatigue our muscles in order to then enable the tremoring process. And the actual TAE, well, happens when we lie on the floor, on our back. In a joking way, I always say, you are lying on the back like a beetle and you start tremoring. <laughs> Um, yeah, I believe it's not necessarily for everybody, but I, I really encourage people to, to 
come in with an open mind. I had many people who were skeptical and um, and then were blown away by how they felt afterwards. So it's I can only kind of yeah introduce it, and people obviously need to need to see for themselves if they want to explore that any further. Um, but through this tremoring process, the body releases stress and tension held in the muscles, mainly in the psoas muscle. And that's not just stress and tension, but an awful lot of emotions are being held in the psoas muscle. And then afterward, we tremor yes. for about, well, in the beginning, maybe two or three minutes in a normal, regular practice, maybe for 10 minutes, depending on what your body feels, what your body wants to yeah, let go of. And then afterwards, the general um, feedback from people is um, they are so much more relaxed. It's really like a, like maybe after, a, well, spa treatment or a massage, um, and they are on this, on, well, still on the yoga mat and feel like, oh, it's so difficult to get up and face the world again. The beauty is, and that's where the somatic element comes in, we don't need to talk about anything that's bothering the person or any past situation or current situation. And um, yeah, that's, sorry, that's the somatic part, exactly. It's a, a really amazing. I mean, that through a pretty simple process, we can actually release. And the psoas muscle is the big muscle in our back. Yes, it connects it? the legs with the trunk and the hips. Yeah. And that's where, I mean, you've experienced it yourself, yeah, Clarissa, when we were, when you were tremoring. That's really where the tremoring process starts. Yeah, the thighs and... Yes, uh, and, I, and I, maybe I'll share a little bit about my reaction because Sylvia very kindly before we did this podcast together said you should experience TRE. So, I mean, first of all, I can say that the muscle tiring exercises were very simple but very tiring. You know, within these six simple exercises, you suddenly feel, oh, I, I can't do this. I need to lie down now because <laughs> I'm quite tired. And that's actually putting you, of course, into a state, I suppose, where you're more receptive. Is that yeah, correct, yeah. Sylvia? And and then literally I you put your foot into sort of feet into sort of butterfly position like like I did. Um like as if if you've ever done that in yoga, you put your soles of your feet together and your knees out wide. And then you just start to move them gently and literally your body takes over. And I think that's all I can say is that my body took over and I had, during the tremoring, really just letting it happen. I think that's the yes. biggest thing, isn't it, Sylvia? You have to allow Absolutely. it. Absolutely. You have to allow it. You need to trust the process and your body's reaction. Um, you can stop it at any time. There's a trick. When, if you remember, yeah, you stretch out your legs and it stops. Yeah. Um, and yeah, as I said before, many people feel like, goodness, what I'm, or, or say even, what am I doing? I'm lying on the floor and I'm, I'm shaking. That is odd. Yes, it is. <laughs> but then again, your body feels like, wow, wow, that is amazing. And um, yeah, it needs to be experienced, I always think. It does need to be experienced uh, because... Once I think I gave over to it and thought, well, okay, I'm going to let my, my, not use my mind, but I'm just going to allow my body. And I think that that's a hard part. I'd say yeah. that's quite difficult because we live in a world where we steer our thinking a lot, far more than we realize we are always trying to think our way. That's yes. the way our world works. We're full of logic, reasoning, brainstorming that's accepted as good here we're in the sensory realm and allowing our body to do what it wants to do quite naturally and I think I, the first time I did it I must have been there for at least five minutes just you know just mm -hmm. tremoring and some some of the movements are, qu are quite big and quite strong um, but the body just does that until I put my legs out and thought, well, I've done enough. And since I've done this with Sylvia, I've been uh, practicing TRE about mm. once a week just to get more into it. And um, 
sometimes the reactions are quite small, you know, and other times they're they're much bigger. And I suppose that's the natural ebb and flow of stress, isn't it, in the in the body in that time? Yeah, Sylvia. and it's not. I mean, there is no no judgment in any way. Um, we don't say, oh, this was good, or this isn't good, or the big movements are better than this. No, not at all. Big movements just mean you are engaging big muscle groups. Small movements, micro tremors, are working with with um, smaller muscle, but. There is no, your body is so clever. Your body really lets go of what your body wants to let go of in this moment. I was working with a woman um, the other day who was saying, that's really weird. My, my right hand is um, tremoring much more than my left. And I said, okay, was there anything? I mean, was, did you have an injury? Was there maybe, did you have your arm in, in cast or whatever? Um, and she's like, yeah, you're right. I had a I had a bike accident when I was a child. And she said, I, I mean, totally, I mean, you're not aware of it. It's such a long time ago. But the body wanted to kind of release stress that was still in this arm much, much more than on the other side. And that's the beauty. And that- as you said, Clarissa, we don't control it. I mean quite the opposite the the tremoring is involuntary it comes from the brain stem so we there's no cognitive thinking or anything um involved in fact i quite often listen to podcasts while while i'm on the floor tremoring just to use the time um and be entertained in a way but it doesn't affect because it's two parts of of my brain so it's just i mean it's yeah i i think it's well, I can't believe it's not more well known because it's so innate. It's really what your body wants to do naturally, and you can kind of retrospectively work on on yeah issues, which might still go yeah bothering you in any way, whether it's um, psychologically or physiologically, and you can also preventatively start by yeah building up more resilience. Become become calmer, and um, yeah, look after yourself and your your health and well being. Exactly, and I think, as you said, a lot of clients afterwards report feeling much calmer, more relaxed, almost immediately. And I would say that my own personal experience is that that carries on and actually you can feel quite tired if you do it later in the day it it really helps you to sleep so for people out there I know in perimenopause who are struggling to sleep this may be an additional technique that could help your body to relax and particularly I think as we have a lot of tension and stress at this time of life I think for many of you listening and tension makes it harder for us to relax harder for us to sleep so this may this may be something to to try um if if that is an area that is really problematic for you one of my questions sylvia is is obviously tiari is a somatic practice and i know from school is back and so is the jc penny mystery sale how much will you save hurry in store for a coupon giveaway while they last you could peel and reveal an extra 30, 40, or even 50% off store wide. Sale and Sunday. Extended store hours Friday and Saturday. Shopping is back, and the savings are too. JCPenney. Coupon valid on select styles through 8 7. Exclusions apply. Giveaway in store only. Must be 18 years or older. See store or jcp.com for details. Do it talking to many therapists and, and clinical psychologists, somatic practices are becoming much more popular overall even if TRE isn't quite sort of become mainstream but they don't replace therapy in terms of 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 cognitive behavioral therapy or other forms of therapy well that's a good question Clarissa I don't know if they I mean I think everything goes and this is my my true belief I mean I tried counseling and didn't get any further. And now I've discovered TIE and any somatic, well, as a somatic experience. And I, I, I think I would always, always go and get on the mat and shake it off. Um, I know that you can complement it nicely. So for instance, you're working with a counselor or a psychotherapist, and sometimes through the whole kind of analyzing and talking about things, the, the whole counseling session comes to a, comes to a halt in a way you, you, 
get to a point where you can't kind of get any further. Then including some somatic exercises might untangle the knot and then when you go back to your counseling and your cognitive, it will just, yeah, you, you the, 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 patient, well, the client is in the flow again. So that can totally help. Um, David Berselli has worked an awful lot with, with war veterans and has been very, very successful in treating um, young men with, with PTSD. Um, I believe it's already been recognized by the American Association for Veterans or whatever um, as, a, as an official modality. Mm -hmm. So that was, that was TAE on its own rather than cognitive therapies. I always think the person who wants to explore or wants to work on themselves, they just need to listen to themselves. What do they want to do? What have they tried before? What worked? What didn't? Are they open-minded enough to say, well, let's, let's try a cognitive modality? Um, but thankfully, yeah. yes, I think it's becoming more mainstream and people are becoming more aware that it's not just all in the brain we need to include and work with our bodies as well. And isn't it nice to give our busy brains a wee break? <laughs> exactly. Uh, exactly. I think that um, that is exactly what our brains do need a lot of the time because we are so busy. We have so much going on up there. We're trying and failing to multitask, yes. thank goodness, in some ways. <laughs> Yeah. But but definitely you're absolutely right, Sylvia. I think sometimes giving the brain a rest maybe allows you to vocalize things that you can't yeah. speak about. Uh, and it's interesting how much somatic practices have gone into the PTSD world. I'm a trained I rest yoga nidra teacher, which is also a modality that's recognized by the American veterans, which is also a form of uh, somatic practice where you move through the body you don't shake here but you mm. kind of move and center and meet different uh, sensations and emotions through the body and that has been used very successfully in a number of veterans big veteran hospitals in, mm -hmm. in the US mm -hmm. too so so similarly I think it's that's often I think where people's it comes into the mainstream is through the most extreme situations, yes. such as people that have experienced tr real trauma that is destroying yeah. their whole life. In fact, you know, the so to then being able to move forward into more mainstream issues and and problems that people yes. may have. And I mean, I see here, listening to you, Sylvia, how valuable this would be for anxiety. Totally. Am I right? Totally, there, there, yes. Silver. Anxiety, irritability. I've worked with a few women um, who, were, who were menopausal with teenage children and their feedback was like, well, I'm, I'm much calmer. My kids can't wind me up anymore because I'm just in myself stronger, calmer and more resilient. And I mean, menopausal or not, I think that's what we all need. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. To build that yes. resilience is incredibly yes. important. Uh, how often, I mean, how do people come into this process, uh, learn it and then be able to practice it? How do people learn it? Yes, yes. yes. I mean, there are several options. You can just get a book and follow the, the exercises described in the book. You can follow the official TAE warm-up video, which I have on my website. So it's under FAQs. Um, you can follow this video and yeah, do the warm-up exercises along the video and then yeah, start the tremoring process. Um, and many people do that. But a warm yeah, word of warning, kind of. I don't want anybody to watch that, try that, and say, oh, it's not working. Because 
I mean, I encourage everybody really to 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 watch it, to try it, to see for themselves if, if that works, rather than saying, okay, I need to book on a course. But please don't say, oh, I've tried it once with a video, but the well, it doesn't do anything. Um, and that's what I want to encourage people then to say, okay, if they understand or see the potential benefits, but didn't get what they were expecting or didn't feel like, well, safe or comfortable enough on the map, then book yourself on a course. And um, I, as well of, I mean, one, well, hundreds, thousands of TAE providers all around the world, um, we run, yeah, regular courses. Um, I do mine mainly online, um, which has the added benefit mm -hmm. that people can stay in their own home or in their favorite place where they have internet, could be somewhere in the garden where they feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. And then, um, yeah, do the do the online sessions without kind of then going, driving home or going home from a, from a certain place. Yeah. Yeah, and that that is definitely really good because I would say you feel really quite quite tired yeah. afterwards in a in a in a good way is how i would describe it it's not like you're exhausted because you've been working too hard but in fact you are just you've let go i mean you're letting go and that makes your body just feel oh, heavy so if i mean doing it at home is a wonderful thing because then you can just decide to <laughs> lie still or you can lie there and just uh <laughs> Sorry, I have the bar. She's, she can hear people moving around outside, so she has to bark. We'll cut that bit out. Um, but, you know, we can come back and we can just come be at home and lie down and rest and let go of our selves and do what we need to do to nurture ourselves gently yes, after the session. Yes. Um, as I said before, I always describe it a little bit like after a spa treatment. When I have a spa treatment, I find the hardest bit and in TAE as well, the hardest bit is to get off that mud and face real life again because you are deeply, deeply relaxed. Having said that, Clarissa, it depends on the person. It depends maybe even on the time of um, of day or when you are when you are practicing TAE. Sometimes people feel really. Um, yeah, fresh, motivated, and 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 really energized. I mean that that can always and also happen. And then it's a matter of kind of tuning in with yourself. Do you do you want to practice in the morning, so I'm I'm really energized and ready for the day, or do you want to practice at night and um, yeah, feel like I'm I'm calming down and I'm ready for a really good night's sleep. Yeah. Well, that that's kind of good advice, I suppose. And I suppose it depends. That it can be different yes, each time, yes, can't yes, it? Yes, because I mean, we are we are yes. human being. I mean, it's <laughs> there is no kind of rule or anything. Yeah, it's the situation absolutely. Mm. Yeah, and that once you've learnt TRE, what would you recommend as being the number of times a week you should? Practice. There is no recommendation. Again, it's it's a matter of what does the pe person feel wanting to let go and needing it um i can only speak for myself i mean i go through phases sometimes i'm on that mud every day um sometimes every other day but i have helped myself and i heard that from many people as well getting rid of um, lower back pain because i don't know what i was holding in my in my lower back but that is one of these typical psychosomatic stress areas right um, many people have neck pain or even teeth grinding, whatever, whatever the the the, yeah. the um, ailment is. Um, so I play tennis a lot, and I notice then after ah. tennis I feel like tension in my lower back, in my hips as well. And then I want, I definitely after a tennis session I want to get on the mat and I want to shake it off. And before I discovered TAE, I have to say, I had so much trouble with my hips that I was concerned I might need a hip replacement. And I'm like, gosh, no, not, no, no way. Um, and that was one of my very first questions when I started um, learning TAE, would that help with my hip? 
um, obviously not if something is really kind of mechanically wrong, yeah, but any yeah. ailment where you know it's based on stress and tension, you're holding, you're holding on to something. I mean, you, you notice it yourself, What I mean, when you really listen and tune into your body, where is it? It might be gastrointestinal. All these people who have really problem with with their gut and so on. It could be. I'm working with a with a client at the moment who has trouble really with the tension she's holding in her in her in her jaw. And um, mm. again, she was blown away after just even one session when she's like, "Yeah, I was only tremoring in my leg or with my legs, but my jaw it feels lighter." Yeah. Um, yeah. I, one one girl I trained with, um, we had a peer session, and she said, "I had an argument with my husband, and I'm really upset, and I'm really angry." Before we do anything else, she said, "I want to be the first one on the mat. I want to shake it off." And again, it's it's a stress re- reaction. It's a stress relief, and that is, yeah. People people tremor in in different rhythm in, in different yeah times and 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 yeah intervals but you should yeah. do more of it yeah and those uh, areas i should do more of it and definitely all those areas you talked about are areas that i've seen in my clients when i've worked with them in mindfulness is areas i've felt myself my jaw a lot of us have tension in our necks from computers and down here on phones and yes lower backs and hips are big areas we hold a lot of tension. And I think, if I remember rightly, lower back pain is one of the number one pain conditions. People go to their clinicians and they have no solutions yes. and often medication yes. doesn't work. So that's a somat- potentially a, where a somatic practice can be immensely Absolutely. beneficial. And you don't need to know. I mean, I don't need to know and I still don't know. What was I holding on to? Yeah, why why was I tensing up? What was happening with kind of the mind body? But I don't need to know, and that's the beauty of it. Yeah, the somatic. That's the beauty of somatic. Exactly. We don't need to analyze. We don't need to know. We don't need to discuss anything. It just, I mean, if the tremoring sorts it out, bring it on. Why? Why (laughs) not? Why not? Why not do that? I think that is exactly my feeling around this Sylvia how can people get hold of uh, the work you do learn more about it maybe start working mm-hmm. with you um, the best thing is always my website because from there it goes to social media or the contact form for telephone number and so on and it's tremendous t-r-e dot co dot uk and as I said there is under FAQs there is the official David Berselli video um how to do the warm-up exercises, how to then start the tremoring process. Um, I really want to encourage people just to give it a try, to have an idea. Maybe maybe that's enough for them. And they were like, wow, yeah, that works. Um, other people, as I said, please, if it doesn't work for you or if you feel like, mm, it's a bit weird, I want to do that with somebody, um, yes, please get in touch with me or with, with anybody else, but don't dismiss it as in, oh, no, it's not working. It's it's odd. No, no. I think we often do that. I think with any practices that aren't, that are out of our normal frame of uh, mm. reference, we can dismiss them. And I would highly encourage having have been lucky enough to do this session and then carry on with it, how beneficial TRE is. And I'm, I'm a huge fan of somatic practices. I think um, they are the way forward in a lot of modern therapy work for all of us who are struggling with so much stress, anxiety, and as you said, traumas with little and big exactly, exactly. Especially now. I mean, first the global pandemic, now the war in Europe. I mean, these are times where we are like inundated with all kind of... Yeah, stress and worry and anxiety. Yeah. Yes, yes. And I think just so much happening as a result of those. And if you're in addition, you, my listeners who are in perimenopause, you're going through a huge physiological, cultural and psychological change too, then every tool we can put into a box that helps us is the way Absolutely. forward. Absolutely. And every tool, can I just also add every tool which which 
really um, empowers you to help yourself. Yeah, because once you've learned oh. TAE, and I mean, you said it, Clarissa, you can now do it and practice it forever. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And the more things we're empowered, and I know that's a big part of your raison d'etre almost, Sylvia, if I put it like that, is exactly what uh, I think many of us encourage. The more empowered we are to take control of our health, the more successful I think the outcomes will be for us Absolutely. too. Absolutely. Yeah. And it saves you money. It saves you time. It saves you yeah, going to your physio or your, your counselor. Do it yourself. Trust your body. Absolutely. Absolutely. That is a fantastic part to end. Trust your body. Sylvia, thank you so much for sharing so much passion and enthusiasm and giving my listeners a small insight into TRE. And I highly encourage the you, all of you, to go to Sylvia's website, check it out and give it a go. It's an amazing and uh, surprising experience. <laughs> Thank you for this opportunity, Clarissa. And yeah, keep shaking. I will. Thank you. Thank you for listening to Thriving Through Menopause. If you like this podcast episode, please hop over to my website, thrivethroughmenopause.com and rate and review it. And thank you if you do that, because it helps others to find the show. Want more news and views on perimenopause and menopause? then sign up to my weekly newsletter, Heart of Menopause, over on Substack. Thank you once again for listening and see you next week for another guest interview helping you to thrive through menopause.